Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. Then welcome back to MCAT Bytes. Today, we're talking about spectroscopy. This fascinating intersection of chemistry and physics allows scientists to see the unseen, offering insights into the molecular world that forms the foundation of everything around us. This is an incredibly important topic for the chem phys section on the MCAT, where you could see anywhere from five to 15 to even more questions. So you super want to make sure you've got spectroscopy understood. That's why we're going to do a multi-part video on spectroscopy. This one is just going to sort of introduce the basic principles that you're going to need to understand the more complex principles later on. So definitely take good notes here and be sure to put these into your Anki cards. Let's begin with the nature of light. Spectroscopy hinges on understanding light itself, a form of electromagnetic EMS radiation that exhibits both wave-like and particle-like properties. Light's dual nature is central to spectroscopy. As waves, light is characterized by its wavelength, lambda, and frequency, v, which are inversely related through the speed of light, c equals lambda v. As particles, light consists of photons, each carrying a quantum of energy directly proportional to its frequency. And this is our E equals HV equation, where H is Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. And yes, because this is the MCAT, you need to remember this number. I'm telling you, this is a very Anki heavy video. So how does this light interact with matter? Well, when light encounters matter, a bunch of different outcomes are possible. Four you need to worry about for the MCAT. We've got absorption, emission, reflection, or scattering. Spectroscopy primarily deals with absorption and emission, processes that are fundamentally quantum mechanical in nature. Absorption occurs when a photon's energy matches the difference, delta E, between two states of a molecule, promoting an electron to a higher energy level, where emission is the reverse process, where an excited molecule releases energy as it returns to a lower state. So absorption, energy from the photon is going in, we're exciting this atom up to a higher energy orbit. The change between these energy orbits are that delta E, whereas in emission, the opposite's happening. We're at a high energy and some photon is being given off, which has some quantized amount of energy, thereby bringing the atom back down to a lower state. And this is still delta E. And sometimes if we wanna be really fancy, we can stimulate the emission. So we can add a bit of energy in, which will cause the atom to go down in state. And because we've put some energy in, we're gonna to have to take twice the amount of energy out because we aren't creating or destroying any energy. So what are some of the spectroscopic techniques you're gonna to need to know for the MCAT? The big, 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 big one is UV Viz. It stands for ultraviolet visible spectrum spectroscopy. This technique observes the absorption of ultraviolet light and visible light, causing electronic transitions. For this, you really need to understand the Beer-Lambert law, which is A equals weird E C L. The E looks more like this. This quantifies the absorption, relating it to the concentration, which is C, of absorbing species, and the path length L of the cuvette containing the sample. Then E is going to be some constant of whatever the substances you're trying to measure, and then A is the absorptive value. The way it works is we have a light source, which is going to, of course, be giving off light in some sort of, you know, most visible and UV spectrum. And then we're going to select it for only a couple spectrum we want at a time. We're going to pass this light through a cuvette, and the cuvette is going to absorb some of that light. So maybe we have three coming in and only, you know, one going out. We then are going to detect the amount of that light, and we're going to do this through some sort of electronic current which we can then compute on a graph on the computer. And the size of that peak will tell us how much matter is in it through the Beer-Lambert equation. Now let's talk about infrared spectroscopy. The MCAT loves, loves, loves asking about IR, especially about alcohols. Here the focus is on vibrational transitions. So molecules absorb infrared radiation leading to changes in vibrational and rotational states. Each functional group within a molecule has characteristic IR absorptions, serving as basically a molecular fingerprint for big chunks of atoms or functional groups. This can help us find functional groups within the molecules. 
The MCAT tests this so frequently. So IR has its own video with practice examples. But basically, as we can see here, the wave number is going to change depending on what functional group we've got. And then finally, NMR, or Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. NMR exploits the magnetic properties of certain atomic nuclei. When placed in a magnetic field, nuclei can absorb radio frequency radiation, causing transitions between nuclear spin states. The environment of these nuclei within a molecule affects their resonance frequency, offering detailed structural information. The MCAT also likes to test this frequently, so NMR will have its own video with practice examples. What you need to know right now is that we can do a bunch of different types of NMR. So we could do it just looking at carbon. We could look at, at just hydrogen or nitrogen or fluorine, pretty much anything. But the MCAT is only going to expect you to know how to read hydrogen and carbon NMR, which we will explore in detail. Spectroscopy in its many forms is a testament to the interconnectedness of chemistry and physics, which is why we have the ChemPhys section. It's going to showcase how fundamental principles of light and matter interactions can reveal the intricate details of the molecular world. As you prepare for the MCAT, remember that a deep understanding of spectroscopy will not only aid in getting those tricky questions right, but it will also open the door to actually understanding the chemistry underlying all of that biology you're going to learn in medical school. So thank you so much for watching our video on the different types of spectroscopy, and I'll see you next time as we explore these in more detail.